Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another in-depth first person walk around video here on NT Auto Reviews. My name is Tyler behind the camera and today we are checking out the 2020 Volkswagen Tiguan and the top tier SEL Premium with our line uh, package here. Okay, so as my loyal viewers know, I always like to kick things off with the window sticker. Just as a little disclaimer so that you guys know what options and trim levels and packages we're working with. But while we're at it, we're going to go over the whole window sticker. So we first off have our fuel economy information. Also our crash test rating so we can see that it has done pretty good in the crash test. We also have some shipping information and our parts content, which I'm pretty sure you can make that out, despite the deeply tinted windows. Also up here on the first column, we have all of our standard features. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, just so you could see it a little better. And you could pause the video to get even more information as I'm scrolling. And if we head back up to the top, we have all of our warranty information as well as options. So I'm going to pause right here for a second because this is the portion of the video that I like to get into just so that you guys can see what we're working with. So we go over to our packages and options um, little segment over here. We can see that we have the auto dimming rear view mirror for an extra $325. Comes with the garage door home links and whatnot. We also have the um, monster mats, which are your all weather floor mats. We also have our cargo blocks, which I'll show you what that is in just a minute. We have the pumper dillo, the rear bumper protection. We also have the first aid and roadside assistance kit included with that. We have a destination charge of just over $1,000. It's right around $1,020 and a total sticker price for this particular vehicle being $40,620. Now this is a fully, fully loaded Tiguan, so you're not gonna find one much more expensive than this. So now taking a walk around to the side of the Tiguan, you could see how large this vehicle actually is, just in general and especially when you compare it to its competitors. So actually if you got this US spec Tiguan in Europe, they, I call, they call it the extended wheelbase Tiguan, they also make one in Europe that's more of the size of the old generation Tiguan. We are in the, the uh, third model year of this generation of Tiguan and we could see the trim level starting to change up just a little bit. Not too many major um, updates but I'm expecting something maybe next year or the year after. However, the color we're working with is deep black pearl and we have a total of six color options in the SEL Premium with our line trim level. Now the color options do change up just a little bit varying on trim level, but we're working with six with this top tier trim level. And the wheelbase stands at 109.8 inches. And wrapping around to the rear of the 2020 Tiguan, we can discuss our drivetrains. Now most trim levels will come standard with front wheel drive with the four motion all wheel drive coming in and it is a little bit of an extra cost. Okay, so details of the exterior on the 2020 Tiguan. Now this one is very, very dressed up with the R-Line package and it really does really dress up this exterior of this car. Now we have completely different front bumpers, front styling, a little bit of a different grille for the R-Line package. But up front we have full LED um, headlights, so your turn signals, uh, daytime running lights, high and low beams, all LED on the SEL premium trim level. If you get a trim level below it, you will have all halogen lights, which do perfectly fine. However, this one does have the LEDs. You also have blacked out trim. Now, no matter what color you get, all this trim will be blacked out on the R line. Pretty neat. And then you also have the parking sensors that span the front bumper with some fog lights as well. 
very nice chromed out R-line grille. You have the nice large Volkswagen emblem with all of the sensors behind it. Also the R-line emblem. In between the two parking sensors we also have the front view camera system. So very attractive front end for the 2020 Tiguan, especially with the R-Line package. So taking a look at the hood, it, had, it sits up nice and tall and we have some very prominent creases going down the side and it also moves all the way around. And also some smaller creases towards the center. Very nice looking hood. And if we move down, we have our 20 inch wheels that come on the SEL Premium R-Line. And I really do think this is the highlight of the exterior. Very good looking wheels with a dual tone. So the machine uh, finish on the um, face of the wheels and gray pockets. And the tires measure 255.40. And they are a little bit bigger of tires for this wheel. So a little bit wider. We also do have the black, uh, the flat black cladding going all the way around the wheels to protect your paint. And we could see it's flared out a little bit to um, accommodate the wider tires. As far as the front brakes go, we have ventilated discs. We also have some nice R-line trim on the front fender and a little bit on the door. We have the chrome window surrounds, and if we take a look at our mirror, you can see that we have the blind spot warning as well as our turn signals. We have smart key entry on the two front door handles. If you can see this little inlet right there, you just put your finger right there, it'll lock, then put your hand behind the handle, it'll unlock. And that's of course when you have the key near the vehicle. So very prominent line coming all the way from the front fender all the way back into the tail lamps. That's pretty much the main feature of the side of the vehicle. We also have some pretty sleek um, side sills with some chrome at the bottom of the doors. And in the back for our brakes we have the solid disc brakes. Up top you can see we have a little bit of a spoiler, the shark fin antenna, some nice satin chrome roof rails as well as your panoramic roof. Taking a look at the back, pretty flashy back here too with the R-Line package. And as far as our tail lights go, they are full LED no matter what trim level you get. So the turn signals, brake lights, and reverse lights, all LED. As far as badging back here, we have the Tiguan SEL badging, Volkswagen, and the 4Motion all-wheel drive badging. We can see down here we have the bumper dillo. This is what they call uh, the bumper dillo, and it's pretty much a, a protector plate for the top of the bumper in case you're loading objects in and out of the trunk constantly. You don't want to scratch the bumper. We also have a trunk release and the uh, rear view camera right underneath the Volkswagen emblem. Some chrome accents down below. Also some uh, faux exhaust outlets. The real ones actually come out underneath the bumper. And parking sensors to finish everything off. That pretty much does it for the exterior. And again, I can't stress to you enough this R-Line package really does uh, spruce up the T1.
Okay, so starting off the interior on the 2020 Tiguan. Now, they have a whole host of color options and seating surfaces. Starting off with the S trim level, you have cloth seats. Everything leading up to the SEL Premium, you'll have leatherette seats, and the SEL Premium will come with genuine leather seats. We can start off with the door panel here, and again, there are three different color options for the SEL Premium. Again, real leather. We have the black leather seats right now. They actually call it the Titan Black. You can also choose between a gray and a more of an orange color, which is pretty interesting. We have nice soft to the touch upper door panels, a little bit of metallic accents, and some uh, mimicked carbon accents, which is pretty neat. Door handle, lock on lock, and you also have the Fender Premium audio system on the SEL Premium. We have some leather armrests over here, the window lockout for children, and your front and rear window controls, the power folding and heated mirror controls as well over here the trunk release and yet another speaker on the door pretty large and carpeted um, pockets on the door here which you could store whatever you need you can see there's also a bottle holder on the front the left of the dash we have an air vent as well as your lighting controls so your regular headlights and then if you pull it out you'll have your uh, fog lights turn on we also have a small storage pocket over here that folds down. We have the lever for the tilt and telescoping steering wheel on the side. And on the left you have your hood release and on the right you have your pedals, very nicely uh, finished aluminum pedals for the R-Line package. As far as our seats go, they are full 10-way power seats, so they have the two-way lumbar and then your rest of your power adjustments with a three-person memory function. So again, the SEL Premium does come with the genuine leather seats. Very nice quality, soft leather. Some stitching on the inside, a pretty neat sign, and some contrast piping that goes around the edge of the seats. But well, let's hop in, get a good overview of the interior while it's off. We'll start up and check out the rest of the interior. Okay, so here's the key fob you'll get with the 2020 Tiguan. Actually, this is the key fob that you'll get with any uh, Volkswagen that has remote start. It's a very similar setup. On the side, you have the panic alarm. At the top, you have the lock, bottom, unlock, trunk release, and your um, remote start. You also have a physical key on the inside where you slide this over and the key will pop right out for you in case you need to use that. Of course, this car has the push button ignition, so you just press the button while your foot's on the brake, and it'll start right up. Okay, so we can start off the driver's cockpit portion of the interior with what's right in front of us. And it's this beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel. Now you have some grip bolsters and some stitching on the inside as well as buttons to each side. Now over here in this cluster, you pretty much have all the controls for your adaptive cruise control. This one right in the center, you can adjust um, how far you want your distance to be from the car in front of you. It's pretty much how an adaptive cruise control works is it'll lock onto the car in front of you and you choose a distance that you want to be. The car will handle the throttle and the braking. You also have this button right here, which you can go between your all of your different safety settings you could check and uncheck them in case you want them on or off and you also have your audio volume on this side as well taking a walk over the airbag cover very nice Volkswagen emblem 
Over here we have pretty much all of our media controls and some controls for the digital instrument cluster up top. We have our voice commands, the up down arrow for different features within the instrument cluster. This view, the different pages and OK also have to do with the digital instrument cluster. Then we also have a skip between, between your to switch between your tracks or your radio stations. Now this being the SEL Premium, it comes with the fully uh, digital instrument cluster. Again, we can use these buttons over here to adjust the information. We have the view button, which you can cycle between three different views. This is a more traditional view, and then you could change what's on the inside. Press the view button. We get a very simple, basic outlook overview. And then also this one can show you four different quadrants as well as your whatever you'd like to see on the in, on the middle. So we can we can use these two different silver buttons as well as the up down to get more uh, information on the center. So if we scroll down, we can get different driving data. We can pick an overview, which is what I have on my own Volkswagen. It pretty much gives you the most information in a pretty uh, normal compact display. And again, if we click the view button, we still get that information on the center no matter what screen we choose. Using these silver buttons, we get scroll between whether you want to see your assist systems, your navigation, and this car does have built-in navigation and it will show up the whole map and everything on the center like some of the Audi products do. However, there's no navigation disk set up yet. We also can show our audio screen, telephone screen, and then also our different vehicle status. And then we also cycle back to the driving data. So taking a look at the upper dash, it's pretty soft to the touch material, very nice. We have a storage tray right up top where you can put sunglasses or whatever you need. And we have a couple of air vents and in the center we have the uh, hazard buttons. And down below we have the upgraded head unit. So with the SE and up you'll get this unit. Um, some of the trim levels won't have navigation, however this one does. If we go to our main menu here we have all of our different selections. So our radio screen, we have all of our different bands. We can pull up a channel list. Also our tune and our different views so we could have the presets, the now playing up on the center or just your channel info. We also have extras such as storing or seeking different uh, information there. We also have settings that has to do with our radio, so our sound settings, as well as different things like our scan, tag songs, and whatnot. So we can go over to our media and our phone screen, which isn't going to display a whole lot because I don't have my phone connected. But once you do that, you start making calls, you hook up your phone with the Bluetooth. Uh, you can also play CDs as well through the uh, CD player in the glove box. We have our nav button right over here, which we can input our destination. And again, the map isn't going to show up because the um, navigation system isn't yet set up. We also have our app button right here, which obviously has to do with our Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. We have our different car settings and information. Now, this screen is pretty intuitive, and I'm pretty surprised that uh, this car had it. And I first noticed that when I bought my um, new Jetta, and it's pretty much like this Tiguan. Um, it has plenty of different features. Some of it that you know I was figuring out months and months after I bought my car. So we could scroll over to our different trips and whatnot, since refuel, which is pretty neat. But then we also have this selection button, which gives us an active info display. So we could choose what we want to see in this view over here. It's pretty neat, and you can also mix and match what you want to have on either side of the display. So if you want your assist systems to display on the left side of the screen, and you want your route guidance for the navigation to display 
on the right side you could definitely do that and again you can mix mix and match to whatever you want very interesting you can also display our off-road screen so we have our steering angle a compass and our elevation again we could customize what you want to see in there as well on any one of these screens Here we have an energy consumption screen so we could see what's taking up most of our energy so we kind of have like a bar graph here the steering wheel heating the climate control the left seat heating we can see what's taking up all of our energy also have our driving data which you just saw our think brew trainer so this will kind of give you tips to driving more economically and it'll give you an actual score to how economically you've been driving throughout your trip we also have our vehicle status over here so you also can pick different vehicle profiles your tire pressure monitoring all that good stuff in there that's pretty much it a pretty cool um, car display in there and then we also just have our menu which uh, is pretty much a whole jumbulation of all of our different apps you can also control the climate control through the screen too which is a pretty neat feature and within each screen you also have settings that in uh, that you can customize so you say where you're in the car screen you could also press your settings here it'll give you different uh, car settings so your light settings also your ESC system you could turn it on and off uh, snow tire mode and whatnot our parking and maneuvering so we could uh, we have the park pilot which this car will actually um, you could set your different volumes and whatnot for the sensors and everything like that the car also does have the ambient lighting um, option so the footwell lighting and also uh, the lighting on the doors you can adjust the uh, brightness instrument cluster settings over here so very intuitive screen now I'm just kind of dipping my fingers in the water with this screen um, you could definitely get more in depth and I'm sure there's other videos out there that will show you but I don't want this video to take 10 minutes just going over the screen so just below that screen we have all of our climate controls now Volkswagen really does do a very uh, simple climate control system you have your temperatures off to either side your fan speed in the middle defrosters AC controls automatic and then putting your climate control up on the menu we could turn it off and you also have your sink controls over here we have our heated seat controls and this also does pop up your heated steering wheel so you can turn that on and off and then also control your heated seats we have where we want the air to blow so defrosters body and feet and then you're recirculating now for 2020 a lot of the Volkswagen models are coming out with the wireless charging pad and this one has it and it's right in front of the shifter with a uh, rubber pad so your phone won't slide around all a lot you have some different uh, media inlets so two USBs and auxiliary and in a 12 volt power outlet now regardless of trim level the Tiguan will come with an 8 speed torque converter automatic transmission we obviously pretty traditional shift lever with the nice leather leather boot and you have an unlock right at the back which you need to press to select gears bring it down we have reverse so again we have the guidance lines that move as you turn the steering wheel very nice quality you can also press the menu button to pull up the uh, surround view so we can also see the parking sensors um, activate we can um, select our different uh, parking settings so if you want a parallel park or perpendicular park the car will do that for you in certain instances we also have our trailer hitch hookup as well as our uh, wide-angle rear-view camera for um, exiting parking spaces it shows you a little visual right there when you're exiting parking spaces with cars on either side and you can't really see too well 
this will help you out and give you a wide angle. You also have different adjustments like your brightness, uh, your contrast, and your different colors. So very unique um, camera system on this car too. I, very, I like all the different camera views that you can get from the T1. Back to the shifter, we have the, the neutral drive and then a sport mode, which you can shift uh, manually down here. Putting it back up into park, we of course have the electronic parking brake. Of course, uh, you can deactivate it by pressing down, activate it by pressing up. Of course, your foot's got to be on the brake to do that. Then you also have your um, start-stop engine logo there. Off to the side, you can manually pull up your cameras without having to have it in reverse, which is always a nice feature. And you can also shut off your auto start stop right there. Now this car has a rotary dial and it also has a combination of different uh, driving surface modes and then also just regular driving modes. So if you press the center of the button, you'll have four different modes. Eco driving, normal driving, as well as uh, sport driving. And you could also press the custom mode and adjust what you would like there. However, if you start twisting the knob, we have a dedicated snow mode. We could twist it to um, a regular all, all conditions road. You have an off-road mode and then a custom off-road mode, which again, you can adjust all of these different settings pretty neat. Definitely very customizable, even more customizable than I was expecting for it to be on the T1. Now down here we have a couple of storage trays including your cup holders and a smaller uh, slim one where you can put your key like I have. And moving over we have a nice uh, leather covered armrest with a little bit of stitching. You pick that up and we have a little bit of storage on the inside. Taking a look up here, we have the optional frameless auto dimming mirror with your garage door home links down at the bottom and a compass. We also have your center stack with the LED illumination for e either side, some more lighting uh, controls as well as your sunroof and sunshade controls. We have some emergency and information buttons up here. And with the R line, you get the full black headliner so it gives you a really sporty look. We also have this fabric shade that covers the panoramic sunroof. You can press the button to have it move all the way back. And the shade does pretty much block out 100% of the light. So you can definitely see now that the panoramic roof is all the way open, it's a very large sunroof and you can either vent the roof up like so or push the button back and the sunroof will get open and you can have the full experience of the wind in your hair you also have the wind buffeting reducer and we can shut the uh, shade now taking a look at the passengers area we have a nice little bit of trim there you can open the glove box and we can see that we have a bin style glove box so we can kind of use it as a cubby. Plenty of room for your owner's manuals and whatnot. We also have your CD player and SD card inlets. Also have SD card holders over there too. Passenger door panels much like the drivers. There's a few less buttons as you'd expect. And the passenger seat is manually adjusting. For this portion of the video, we pretty much wrapped up the driver's seat and front cabin of the 2020 T1. I'm going to adjust the driving position for the front seat to a uh, comfortable position for my 5 foot 10 self so we get a good outlook of how much room we have in the rear seat.
Okay, so pretty solid sounding doors for the Tiguan II. And absolutely massive rear doors for plenty of access uh, to the back seats. Now, again, optional on the Tiguan is the option to have two rows of seating or three rows of seating, which is pretty awesome. This one being the two rows of seating. They're pretty much the same materials as up front. The plastic up top with the leather armrests. They have a speaker, actually a couple of speakers on the rear door. The uh, window control, door handle, and a little bit of a storage pocket. Of course, the rear seats are set up in a bench configuration. And I'll hop in to show you how much room we have. So really good amount of room back here. I'd say at least four or five inches, maybe six inches of legroom. Again, I'm five foot ten, and that's a normal driving position for myself. Also have map pockets back here, a couple of air vents, and a charging USB and 12 volt power outlet. I have a very small drivetrain hub, so if you have center passengers back here, they'll have no problem with sitting back here as well. Very nice attention to the detail even on the back seats. We have the nice headrest and a very soft um, center armrest with a couple of cup holders. Now you can see there's a little tether back here. I mean, if you pull that, it'll actually fold down the seat. Pretty neat. Again, very large rear doors. and also very large rear sunroof. Now the sunroof in the rear pretty much ends where the uh, rear headrests are, so it's a very massive uh, sunroof, very nice, especially at nighttime if you wanna go stargazing, just take the Tiguan out. We have code hooks up here, as well as some LED illumination for the rear, and also a grab handle. And so that pretty much does it for the interior of the Tiguan. Okay, so if you opt for the fully loaded SEL Premium um, Tiguan, all you need to do to open the full power trunk is just hold down on the button over here. There are a few different ways to open the trunk. You can also opt for a kick sensor so you just kick underneath the bumper if you have things in your hand and it'll open up but again it is a full power trunk lid on the SEL premium now we have a couple of accessories back here that I want to go through this one being your roadside assistance kit so it comes with things like jumper cables even a rain poncho um, here's actually a little picture of what it comes with and it's a very useful little kit there, and I'm surprised at the amount of things that it comes with. We also have our wheel locks kit over here, a roadside assistance kit, our first aid kit. We also have our all-weather monster mats, as well as our cargo blocks. So what these are, is you can kind of set them up on the carpet, and on the bottom they have Velcro. So they stick to the carpet, and you kind of build a wall around your cargo so it doesn't slide around. We have also have the all-weather cargo mat here which is nice carpet and it also velcros to the actual carpeting of the vehicle. And if you lift that up you could see that you have the uh, nice place to store your cargo shade. Once that's installed you could pull it back and prevent people from looking into your cargo. And you also have the spare tire underneath there as well. One more thing I'd like to mention is you also have these handles that will fold down the rear seats. And you can fold them down a 20, 40, 20, or just a 60, 40. There's also a 
uh, 12 volt power outlet with a light hiding back here too. You also have an LED light over here too that illuminates the ground right where you'll be stepping. So, Tiguan's equipped with the 4-motion all-wheel drive. will come with a 16.4 gallon fuel tank, however if you get the front-wheel drive, you'll have right around 15.9 gallon tank. And according to the window sticker, you should be seeing right around 20 miles per gallon in the city and 27 on the highway. Even though this is a turbocharged engine, Volkswagen recommends you put regular fuel in it, which is nice. You can also unscrew the cap and put it right here in case you don't want to scratch your paint. And so that pretty much wraps things up for the 2020 Tiguan. I hope you have enjoyed it just as much as I have and I also hope you hit that like button and also the subscribe button to help my channel keep going.